Hey, New Heights students. It's your boy, Tim. Uh, I'm sitting here in my apartment. The sun is setting right outside the window. Uh, it's almost 8 p.m., and if my math is correct, we're on the 94th day of March. Uh, some would say it's June 2nd, but probably not. Probably not, but yeah, we're just... I'm surprised we're still here, but if this is the Lord's plan for us, then I am psyched to see what he's going to do. I really am, and uh, I know it sucks just being cooped up, not having much to do, especially with school ending early. It's kind of just one less thing to fill up time, but man, you'll think of something. I haven't yet, but you will. Uh, <laughs> but one thing the Lord has been putting on my heart lately is the story from... Matthew, uh, where Jesus is being delivered to the Jews for crucifixion. And here, I'll just, I'll read it. So it's Matthew 27, verses 15 through 23. <clears throat> At the festival, the governor's custom was to release the crowd, a prisoner they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, who is it you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? For he knew it was because of envy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judge's bench, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for today I have suffered terribly in a dream because of him. The chief priests and elders, however, persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to execute Jesus. The governor asked them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? Barabbas, they answered. Pilate asked them, what should I do then with Jesus who is called Christ? They all answered, crucify him. Then he said, why? What has he done wrong? But they kept shouting all the more, crucify him. This is a very, very sad passage to read because... Even Pontius Pilate knows that Jesus has committed no crime under Roman law or old Jewish law. Um, but the crowd is still saying, crucify him. And when he asks them why, they don't give a reason. They just keep yelling, crucify him. That's how bent they are on getting rid of this problematic, uh, controversial man. <clears throat> so let's go over the setting of what's happening here. The time is on Passover, or about to be Passover, and Passover is the time where they remember when they were when their ancestors were in Egypt, and God sent the angel of death to take the firstborn of every household, and Moses told them that their firstborn would not be taken if they put the blood of an unblemished lamb on their doorpost, and then death would pass over them. So that's why they celebrate that. And that's why it was on that day that Jesus was to die, because he was an innocent, sacrificial lamb who let death and separation from God pass over us. Uh, the place was Jerusalem, uh, the capital city of Israel, under Roman law and occupation. Uh, the present people were... Jews who did not like at all what Jesus was teaching. Just, they had an expect, expectation of a Messiah that would come down as a king and overthrow the Roman occupation that had come over them, the Roman oppression that had all but enslaved them. Um, <clears throat> but he wasn't that. And he claimed to be the Messiah, but he wasn't doing what they thought in their minds the Messiah would do. So that's why they had all this anger toward him, because he was claiming to be something they didn't want him to be. Um, so let's talk about what G who Jesus is and was in that time. He was a teacher. He was officially recognized as a rabbi, a Jewish teacher. And the only things he would teach on was how to treat one another. Like when he said, you have heard it said, an eye for an eye, but I tell you, if someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn your left to them also. Um, 
and he taught us how to interact with God, like when he taught us the Lord's Prayer. So those were the things he taught, how to interact with one another in love and how to interact with our God in love. He was also a healer. He was known. It was undeniable by anyone around there that he had healed blind people and he had healed lepers and he had cast out demons from possessed people. But they just saw all of that as evidence that he was of the devil. Um, and most importantly, he was the son of God. Um, his disciples knew it in how he talked and how he acted and they knew it to be true so much that they died for it later. Um, but let's talk about who Barabbas is now in contrast. He was a rebel. He was known to have been part of a Jewish, Jewish, excuse me, Jewish uprising against Roman occupation. Um, he was also a murderer. That's what the scriptures tell us. He was charged with murder and that's why he was a prisoner to begin with. Um, and most of all, plain and simple, he was a sinner. He was a sinner just like you and he was a sinner just like me. He was broken and probably unrepentant and he was by no means an honorable, upstanding member of the community. He was just, he was known to be a troublemaker. Even if you didn't, I mean, even if you got along with him, you knew that his methods were just way too violent and destructive. And that's why he was in prison about to be executed. But they called for him instead of the man who had healed people and the man who had taught how to love one another. And so after thinking about who these two people are, why is it relevant? Why do we need to care about this story? The story is kind of moving, telling us the story of um, Jesus' crucifixion, and then Barabbas shows up out of nowhere, and it stops Jesus' journey to the cross to tell us that the crowd had a chance to pull Jesus away from that fate, and they didn't. They pulled a criminal, a known, proven criminal. And the reason it's in there is because we are Barabbas. The story is meant to reflect who we are to Jesus. We, we were sinners against God and against people time and time again. You have been and I have been over and over again sinned against God and those around us. But instead of God punishing us for it, he punished his son. He had every right to punish us for our crimes, but he put that he gave that punishment to his son instead of you and instead of me. Instead of Barabbas. Because Jesus loved Barabbas. He loved him. And he loves you and he loves me. That's why we are Barabbas because those two things that define Barabbas also define you and me. So what do we take away from it? It's hard to really look at this passage and try to figure out what to take from it because it's like we are supposed to see this as a really heinous crime against an innocent man and hate it and condemn it. And we're also supposed to rejoice that it happened because that is why we're saved. But in the end, we're living eternally because of it. It was awful and it's described as just utter pain. That should have been ours, but he took it from us without us asking him to, without us even wanting him to, because we didn't care, but he took it. And that's what we need to walk away with. And that's what we need to tell people about that. This is the core of the gospel that we were Barabbases ready to be executed. But Jesus took our place in that execution. All right. So I'm going to close this in prayer and hope that 
God is also putting on your hearts and even more on my heart the message of this story and how vital it is to tell people about it, especially now. So pray with me. Father God, you are great. You are loving more than we know and more than we want to know because it is so great that we don't deserve it. Father, I thank you for saving Barabbas from that fate, and I thank you for saving us from that fate, and for sending your son to be there in place of me, and in place of all my friends watching, that that was their fate as well, and you took that from them and gave it on your son. Father, we thank you, and we ask that this become an inspiration an inspiration to cry for justice and cry for grace because both are so defining of you and your character and what you call us to do and who you call us to be. And Father, the death of your innocent son was necessary but it was also so cruel. So Father, I pray that you give us the strength to stand up against that kind of cruelty when we see it, and to extend grace and love to those who choose not to. And above all, Father, I pray that you give us clarity, that we not be blinded by our own pride or anger or that of others. Father, we love you and we praise you. And we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, thanks, guys. Hope you have a good week. And I'll see you when I see you.